Mighty God, you spoke the word into being. Speak now to our hearts. By the power of your spirit, make these ancient words live. That way that we may be shaped into your people, eager to bear your claim in the world and to give flesh to your future. For we pray in the name of Jesus, who leads us into life. Amen. <coughs> the first reading today comes from 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3 through 15, in pages, on page 212 in your Bibles. Share in suffering like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. No one serving in the army gets entangled in everyday affairs. The soldier's aim is to please the enlisting officer. And in the case of an athlete, no one is crowned without competing according to the rules. It is the farmer who does the work who ought to have the first share of the crops. Think over what I say, for the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. That is my gospel. For which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that, we, so that they may also obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, the eternal glory. The saying is sure, if we have died with him, we also lived with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this, and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which, do not, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by Him, a worker, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Our second reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter or chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. You can find it on page 80 of your pew Bibles. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through a region between Samaria and Galilee. He entered a village. Ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said to them, Go, and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. And then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. And then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? None of them were found to return and give praise to God, except this foreigner. And then he said to them, Get up and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Would you pray with me? <sighs> Lord, help us to hear what you want us to hear today. Guide our hearts and our minds. Be with the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts. Lord, may they be pleasing and acceptable in your sight. We pray that anything that is not from you would be quickly forgotten, but the things that are from you, that they would take root in our hearts and in our lives. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Oh. I want to start off by saying that I think the choir could have just closed it up with that. Okay? Um, I, uh, that was awesome. In, in the true sense of awesome. Um, 
praise God with a with thankful heart. Is that what that was? Just one of the lines. Praise to the Lord for He is good. Um, you know, the, and I'm going to talk about gratitude today. Woo! Um, anybody really good at gratitude? It's okay if, if you are. Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Good. No, that's good. I, I want to say there are people for which gratitude is like really their spiritual gift. Do you know this person? Or maybe it's you. Think of somebody. I was telling you about my great aunt, Naoma. Okay? Naoma, I've been having fun thinking about Naoma this week. Naoma was someone who embodied gratitude. She was such a warm person, but when you told her about something happening in your life that was really good, she was genuinely happy and grateful for the gifts that you got in your life. Like there was, you know sometimes you're, you tell somebody about something great that's happening and they're like, oh good, and you can see the jealousy. <laughs> yeah? Okay, none of that was there with Naomi. She was legitimately grateful for everything. For the roof over her head, for the fact that she got to eat that day, for the fact that I was in seminary as a woman. <laughs> okay? Like, this lady was an, a delight. A delight. And she lived a life of gratitude. And it was contagious when you were around her. Have you been with people where their, their joy and their thanksgiving is contagious? Yes. So, with this story that happens in the New Testament, and it's kind of interesting. It's kind of a, I, I, I'm going to try to not slip into a slippery slope here and start pointing the finger at the other nine. <laughs> Who wants to be like, what were you guys doing? I really want to, but I'm not going to try not to go there. But there were ten of them. They were, had leprosy. They cry out to Jesus at a distance. Heal me. Jesus says, go and show yourselves. And so and it says, as they were going, they were made clean. So we kind of don't know what that looks like. If you're a visual person, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I want to get gruesome with leprosy. But... They're, they're made clean on their way to see the priests. So they show themselves to the priests, and one would assume part of why you would show yourself to the priests is to show that you are able to be part of the community. That's why Jesus would say, go and show yourselves that you've been made clean, that you don't have to live on the outskirts anymore. And maybe these, this group was so overwhelmed by being able to be in the community, that's where they stayed. In the, in the home of the community. But one, one of them, the foreigner, the Samaritan, which by the way, every time you hear Samaritan in the gospel, you should hear dum dum dum. <laughs> okay? That's the least that's what I hear. I'm exposing myself <laughs> this morning. <laughs> but like, like melodramatic, boo hiss kind of character with the long mustache. <laughs> okay, that's how they see them. And it was the Samaritan who came back. The bad guy in the story comes back and thanks Jesus. He bows down at his feet, he praises God, thanks Jesus, and Jesus says, <laughs> Your faith is healed. Well, yes, your faith is healed you, but you're right. He did say first, were there not ten of you? Now it's interesting, because I, I read some commentaries this week, and, and we don't 
actually know what that sound is like. There's a way to ask, were there 10 of you with a sad heart? Were, were there 10 of you? Or frustrated? Were there 10 of you? We don't know actually what Jesus' response is there, which is part of why I'm, I don't want to belabor that too much. I don't want to put something that, there that's not. Because we honestly don't know. But then he says, go. Your faith has made you well. Think on that for a minute. <clears throat> they have already been cured. But this man was made whole. Do you, do you see the difference? There's a difference between being cured of your physical, all, all ten of them were cured. What currently ailed them was fixed. That's gone. That's off the table. But this man's life was made well. And that's what I want you to think about. And how gratitude got him there. How gratitude got him to the place where he could be made well. With me? Okay. So as you think about this, I lost my train of thought. Hold on. <coughs> it's gone. Welcome to the club. Two years. <laughs> two, two years I've been with you. This is the first time I've totally lost it. <laughs> nice. Okay, I'm going to go back and read the scripture. I'm human too. Really? <laughs> and Jesus asked, were there not ten that were made clean? But the other nine, where are they? But none of them were found to return and give praise to God except the foreigner. And that's Jesus who says that. And then he said to them, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. I went it now. I remember. So your faith has made you well. That is not quantitative. Do you see that? It's not how much faith you have makes you so much well. Because that's how we talk about it sometimes, is it not? You've got to have a lot of faith to be made well or to be healed or to... I want to be very clear that sometimes... The healing part, the physical healing part, doesn't happen the way we want it to. And that has absolutely nothing to do with your faith whatsoever. That has nothing to do with how you pray, or how often you pray, or for with what you pray. Tim is still sick. We have been praying for him for a long time. Yes, we're praying for the physical wellness, but the emotional wellness we're praying for too. The man stuck tampons up his nose that we talked about last week. His, his heart, in some ways, is well. Do you see this? And it has nothing to do with the amount of faith we have. Because he said him and his Lord are still friends. That's right. Him and Jesus, they're still got it. They're still buddies. And you can still be grateful in the midst of that. Because I do think, I do personally think, that gratitude helps us grow in faith. Would you agree? Yes. yes. I think it helps us grow in faith, but there is no amount of faith required to be healed. 
And there is no amount of faith required to be made whole. But he came back and said, thank you. And God, said, or Jesus said back to him, your faith has made you well. You are already on this path towards being well. Because you have gratitude. And we're entering a season of gratitude. Yes? yes. You know it's coming? Yes. I know it's coming. And it gets really easy in the next few weeks to start doing things for a holiday about gratitude with an ungrateful heart. Yeah? Am I guilty of this? Okay, I'm guilty of this. And there are those all kinds of things, right? The 30-day Thanksgiving gratitude calendars and the this and that that can help remind us because I, I believe that the practice of gratitude, and statistics show this, the practice of saying thank you or being grateful for things in your life grows. That it, it's a habit. It starts off as building a habit of saying thank you. So is there someone in your life that you need to say thank you to? Always. There's always someone we can say thank you to. And I'll be honest, last year I started this practice of trying to write thank you notes to members of the church regularly, and I kind of fell off. <laughs> but I can tell you that every person who got one of those has said something back to me about it. I get mystery notes on my desk every now and then that just say, thank you for what you're doing in our church, and it's signed a member. It makes my week. It makes my week because part of being grateful is noticing. Part of it is seeing the presence of God in it and being grateful for God's work amongst it. So my hope is that maybe we can be a community of the one in ten. We can start to build an attitude of gratitude. <laughs> that we can be people who come to others and say, thank you. Thank you for the beautiful work that you're doing. But also that we can be people who go to God and say, thank you. Thank you for the beautiful work you are doing. Because we don't necessarily remember to come back to God when we've been healed or made well and said thank you. Amen.